Today we're going to take an in-depth look at the rotary rocketry Apogee nose cone. This is a combination nose cone and electronics bay all in one. In our previous video, we did a complete step-by-step -step build tutorial for the body and fin portion of our 4-inch Eliminator rocket. Today, we're going to take a look at the nose cone and electronics bay that we use for this rocket. These are 3D printed parts, and they're available on Thingiverse. So you can print these parts yourself or have them printed. There's a link to the Thingiverse page in the description. For 3D printing these parts, I use PLA or PLA+. Now you could use a different 3D printing filament, that's really your choice. The flight computer mount is a thin wall part, so I print that with 100% infill. The base is under quite a bit of stress when the ejection charge fires and when the parachute deploys, so this needs to be a good strong part. I print this with 50% infill. Now you could certainly print it with a higher infill, but I wouldn't go less than 50%. And then the nose cone is printed with 20% infill. Now you could print it with more infill if you're looking for a stronger nose cone, or if you're trying to balance out a rocket and you need to add some weight up at the top of the rocket, this is a good place to add it. You can increase the wall thickness or the infill and end up with a heavier nose cone. But I feel that 20% infill provides a good strong nose cone without adding a lot of excess weight. Integrating the flight computer into the nose cone makes building the rocket simpler and faster because we don't have to build an electronics bay into the rocket. There's three parts to this nose cone system. The first one is the nose cone. On the outside, it's just a basic nose cone. The sleeve is sized to fit into a 4-inch thin wall cardboard shipping tube. On the inside, there's a large cavity, and around the end are large screw threads. The next piece is the base. This part threads into the bottom of the nose cone. Now before we talk about the base, I just want to point out that the threads in the nose cone have also been designed to fit 3 inch ABS or PVC threaded plumbing caps. So if you don't want to use our base piece and you want to make your own electronics mounting platform, you could use a pre-made PVC or ABS part. Now there's several different styles of those caps. This is a common one with a square nut on the bottom of it. And then here's a more flat style as well. Any of those will thread nicely into the bottom of the nose cone. There's a bunch of features on our base, so let's take a close look at that. First we have this indented area. This is where the flight computer mount attaches. The mount is designed to hold the Egg Timer Apogee flight computer. This mount slides into place. We'll talk more about the mount and the flight computer a little later. The hole in the center is for the ejection charge. Here's one of our ejection charges. It's a copper cap with a screw coming out one end. I'll put a link in the description to our video that shows how we build this. The screw goes through the hole and is secured with a nut. The wire goes through this small hole so it can be connected to the flight computer. This quarter inch diameter hole over here is for attaching the parachute cord. One method would be to install an eye bolt and then use a quick link to attach to the parachute cord. But I use a different method that doesn't require an eye bolt. I start with a short piece of 550 paracord. This cord is around 4 millimeters in diameter. I tie a bowline knot at one end. This is a good strong knot that's self-tightening. The harder you pull on it, the tighter it gets. But the loop doesn't change size. I'll put a link in the description to a video that shows how to tie this type of knot. Then thread the cord through the hole and tie a knot on the other side to secure it in place. Hit the ends of the cord with a flame to keep them from fraying. Now we have a loop where we can use a quick link to attach to the parachute cord. This indent area here is just a finger hole to assist in installing and removing the base from the nose cone. When the base is printed, there's some thin supports in this area that can easily be removed. And finally, we have this large hole here. It's smaller on one side and larger on the other. This is a vent hole. 
The flight computer measures barometric pressure to determine altitude. So that means that the flight computer needs to be vented to the outside of the rocket. This vent hole in the base vents the flight computer chamber down into the upper portion of the rocket body. And then there's several small holes in the rocket to vent to the outside. I have four holes around here and four holes around here. The reason that there's so many holes is there's the possibility that some of these might get blocked by the parachute. We want to have enough holes so that even if a couple of them get blocked, there'll still be plenty of venting. The vent hole needs to have a filter installed. When the black powder explodes in the ejection charge, it produces a lot of smoke and soot. If there's no filter in the vent hole, then the soot will get up into the electronics area and get all over the flight computer. I've used a variety of materials for the filter, such as fabric, batting, or foam. It just needs to be some type of material that allows air to pass through easily, but will block larger particles. I have a bunch of these abrasive discs. It's about a quarter inch thick, and it's a flexible woven material. This works really well for the filters as well. Whatever you use, you just need to make sure that air passes through it very easily. The filter needs to be adhered in place so it doesn't pop out. I just use a little silicone caulking to hold it in place. It sits into this larger section of the hole. If the filter looks like it's getting a lot of buildup after a few uses, just run it under some water and that will clean it off. Now let's take a look at the flight computer mount. This part is designed to hold the Eggtimer Apogee flight computer. We use the Eggtimer Apogee because it's a simple and inexpensive flight computer. This comes as a kit that needs to be soldered together. We have a video on our channel that will tell you everything you need to know about building the Eggtimer Apogee flight computer. There's a link to that video down in the description. The flight computer slides into the slot on the mount. The single cell LiPo battery slides into the slot below the circuit board. And then the whole thing slides onto the base. This is a loose fit, so you may want to secure the mount and the circuit board in place with a small amount of caulking or hot melt glue. It's not absolutely necessary to secure these parts in place because once the base is installed into the nose cone, the nose cone will prevent the parts from separating. But I like to secure the parts in place so I don't have to worry about them falling off when I'm setting up for a launch. And that is the Rotary Rocketry Apogee Nose Cone System. In our next video, we're going to be doing a complete build tutorial for the newest version of our Super Monkey rocket motor. It's a PVC case motor filled with flexi fuel sugar fuel, and then we'll be launching our newest Eliminator rocket along with the Apogee nose cone. Be sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our future content, and hey, hit that like button before you leave, we really appreciate it. Be sure to check out the full selection of Rotary Rocketry t-shirts and hoodies, there's a link to our shop in the description. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.